Hello, everybody. Anna Sabran was here. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have a special guest on with me, Dennis O'Connor. He is one of the interactive storytelling masterclass members and also one of the founding people for our accelerator. So he started when we were just getting started. So faith, he had ultimate faith in us. <laughs> Hopefully it paid off. Faith, faith paid off big time. <laughs> it, it was, they call it kismet in some places. You yeah. Know, it was just the right time, the right place for both of us. It's, it's awesome that, yeah, we connected and I, I even remember our, our, when you, you jumped on uh, that first uh, webinar and you were like, I like this, let's talk, right? <laughs> I was like, who is this guy? So <laughs> that was awesome. So thank you so much for spending time with me today. I, um, you, have, uh, you, have, uh, you have something going on, uh, big dreams and uh, huge vision. And I, I wanted to dig into that today and then see how storytelling is a part of that. Um, so first off, first off, before you even joined uh, this storytelling uh, program, um, what were you doing? What's the background? Uh, the background. Uh, I've been a teacher in almost all my life, or it seems like since I was about 16 years old. And uh, for the last 21 years, yeah, 22 years, I've been a completely online instructor and teacher. Before that, I spent 25 years in the trenches with uh, kids, taught everything from fourth grade through high school, uh, professional development, uh, taught a lot of teachers. And along the way, got addicted to technology early. Um, I had a bulletin board server up before there was a regular internet. <laughs> and nice. I could connect with kids um, publishing their poetry. And, and getting, you know, uh, there's a kid in Idaho, there's a kid in, you know, it was great. It was wonderful. And I was hooked early on as a writing teacher in particular, encouraging kids to tell their stories, the personal narrative, mm. which is the thread of all my teaching work. And it's one of the things that led me to you. Mm. Because when I saw that first webinar of yours, your personal narrative, your story, your origin story was enormously powerful. It really was. It touched my heart. And I've always been wide open in my heart to those kinds of stories. So as a writing teacher, I taught narrative writing. And then I started te teaching word processing as a way to get into it. And from word processing, it became logo programming. It became computers. I became a computer director for my district. And it kind of evolved out of there. But it was always with the belief that I could help people learn how to think with computers, that they would use those tools as ways to communicate. And just by happenstance, the primary method for me was to help people tell their stories. And when I was working as an online teacher, <clears throat> my job was to teach teachers how to teach online. Mm -hmm. So I was working with lots of teachers, thousands of teachers over the years to help them understand how they could tell their stories, how they could connect with their kids, how they could get past the, the, the static uh, nature that can, can happen in online education and get into discussions and get into telling their stories within these small discussion groups. So after doing that for, gosh, for 20 years, um, it came time to change. And it was always time to change. I always move jobs a lot anyway. New things, and, new uh, challenges. Yes, I love it. I mean, when I was teaching, it had to be every seven years I would change. You know, I, I couldn't do the same job. I, I spent time in the fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade. And I, I used to say that uh, seventh and eighth grade, was they were like dog years. You know, So I had 15 years there and that would multiply it out with a lot of experience. Um, and also some of the very best stuff ever because yeah. getting young adolescents to tell their stories and believe that their stories were worthwhile. That was the soul work. It was just so good. Um, in any event, um, after teaching teachers how to teach online um, and after a really good run, I decided to retire, but it was only after working for a, a helping with a startup called this uh, Precision Healthcare Ecosystems for about three years. It's a healthcare startup that is patient-centered and the impulse of the group is to help patients tell their stories. You know, we see a theme working up here <laughs> because yeah. that's why um, 
when I came to your uh, startup and it, it, it just was beginning. And I'd, I'd seen your videos and I, I knew who you were. I'd seen the interactive work a long time ago and watched it grow. And I was working with Articulate in 2005 and putting together learning objects and doing lots of other things. But I'd always been struck by the importance of scale and how I couldn't scale small discussions. And then I started making page turners for my startup to teach people how to find health information. And they were pretty good. They were pretty, they looked good. The information was solid. I'd had a lot of background in, in information fluency studies. They were good. But to me, they just were page turners. There was no engagement. There was no getting there fired up. And that's one of the things that I learned working with you is that we needed to engage the learner in a way that would make them interested enough to give that precious bit of time they have to learn something and that it would come through Joseph Campbell and the hero's tale stuff that I did with kids 30 years ago. It all came together in this beautiful package of creating a story that would help tell why and show why and get you to feel why you'd want to know more about this subject. So it was a big pivot for me because I had put a lot of time into these page turners and it was just about time to publish them. And I thought, Oh, no, I can't do it. This isn't good enough. I need something better. And that's what I learned to do with the accelerator, the interactive storytelling accelerator. And I literally learned it from the ground up. You know, 40 years ago, I did some screenplays, you know, a long time ago. And my brother happens to be a, a master in that particular area in, in, in game design. So I had found my own niche and suddenly... I'm learning again. I'm learning brand new things. I had a vague sense of them. And one of the things that has been the best thing in my life is that I've always been paid to learn. That's one of the great things about being a teacher. You know, you, <laughs> you just find new things. And I was tired of the type of e-learning that I was doing. It was good stuff, but it was a gold standard that wouldn't scale. I mean, if I could get 15 or 20 people in a classroom, that would be great. I could do it with 12. The biggest class ever was 75. Hard to do. But to get to real audience these days, I think it has to be on demand and it has to be intriguing enough that it's just not the standard thing people see. And because this group we're involved with, it started with a group called Project Apollo. These are people that have all survived severe, even catastrophic health concerns. Many of them who are undiagnosed. There's no known reason for what's happened to them. And we got together and started telling our stories to each other. And that's how we bonded. Those stories are powerful. So we started with this sense that we can touch people with our stories. And here I am making educational materials for them and building an instructional design system for them that doesn't really tell their stories. It didn't fit. So I, I, I put a big stopper on an enormous amount of work. And I said, no, I'm going to go off and learn how to do this with you. And with a brilliant graduate student who just finished up as I was, I was, he was like one of my last students after I, I had not missed a semester for what, 40 years. It's <laughs> just amazing. <laughs> and I meet this brilliant woman and that's, that's Trish McAweeck. And she wasn't even trained as an instructional designer. She just walked into it with all this talent and she had this great ability to teach online. And I placed her as an intern in a certificate program for instructional design. And her mentor tried to hire her immediately. <laughs> and so when you want to hire somebody that fast, you know, it's a real measure of their skill and talent. So Trish and I went through the training together to build our story. It's called Michelle's story. And uh, it's a story about a young woman with a difficult pregnancy. It's a woman's story. And so it was really important to have women tell it. And that was my cue to understand that I needed to step back, learn what I could from the process, which is, I think you've got it nailed. It's really brilliant stuff. And let the people with the talent and the skill and the drive work towards the completion of our goal. And I knew it would take a long time and it did, but it's the first one. And now the program, the, the method is locked in. We've got the means of 
rolling it out. We've got our Articulate team set up. We've got the review system working. We've got lots of horsepower there that when we get fully funded, which is it's looking pretty bright, then we can really start turning things around quickly. Um, and I, by quickly, I mean concept to execution in three months. That's not an undoable thing, mm -hmm. especially if we've learned a, one of the big lessons. Our story is pretty long. So it is. If, yeah. If we compact it, it's, it's a stronger way to pull in at that attention that's so precious. And mm -hmm. so, um, well, that's what I meant by kismet. It's meant, it's faded in almost in the sense that it was the right thing to happen at the right time with the right people. And I'm pretty connected to social media. I'm dialed into lots of spots and I just don't see much of this brilliant work being done. I've seen a lot more of it thanks to you. You've introduced you know, all these great examples, but it's still a rare bird. Mm -hmm. And I can, quite frankly, I think it's that rare aha moment that we can present to potential funders as we move from startup to better funding that will stop them. You know, well, this is, I, we haven't seen this before. And uh, so I'm not saying I'm counting on it. I just feel that's what's going to happen. So it resonates. But, yeah. but then again, you're, um, you are a good salesperson, I think, because I remember when um, you pitched this, like you pitched this idea, right? So mm -hmm. tell me, tell me, tell us about that. Pitching the idea of Michelle's story? Yeah. Um, gosh, well, I'm trying to think back. I've, you know, I've documented this thing enormously, built timelines around it, I've linked to Loom videos. I've, 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 I've wanted to create a curated archive of how we did this. But to get back to the inception of the story, it was my attempt in um, Rise 360 to create a little interactive introduction to the story. And I've gone back and I've, I've looked at it. And for, you know, a hacker's attempt, eh, not bad. And I, I built a couple of them, and although they're kind of okay. But um, they weren't what we have now. They were a good introduction to it. And I thought, well, you know, I can teach myself this stuff. So, you know, I booted up LinkedIn Learning. I've got an account there. I, I, I ground away at all this stuff. And I realized, I just can't do this on my own. It's just, I have a limited amount of time I have to work. I have other commitments. And I just couldn't get my hands around it the way it needed to be done as fast as I used to be able to. Because you tend at my age to remember what you could do 20 or 30 years ago and say, oh, well, I can knock this thing out. And then you're saying, yeah. I can't do that anymore. So it's a long time but, for things yeah, to sit. <laughs> well, you start hiring brilliant young people. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's why someday I'm going to be coming back to you and, and Ryan and hiring you guys because you're brilliant young people. And uh, so I backed off. And then I found you. It was just about that same timing. I'd seen something in, in Trisha's work. She, I, I, she was doing work with a, as an intern with introductory IDs. And I suggested to her, because she was working um, in medicine and radiology in particular, that she might want to try a scenario. And just, just a suggestion. And the great thing about her was she could always proactively understand where I wanted her to go. And that you'd come back three or four steps beyond where I thought she could be. I, I just gave her that little seed and I, I checked back in a week and she said, she'd knocked out a, she'd set up a test with articulate and all the rest. And she'd knocked out a pretty decent little piece. Yeah, I remember. I saw it too. <laughs> yeah. And I thought, click, 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 mm -hmm. click. I think I'd already started with you. And I thought, oh, I, and I, then I decided to hire Trish and I got her on board and whoosh, I actually paid out of my pocket to put her in the class because I wanted her to get that training. And I knew that together mm -hmm. we could go someplace. And that's exactly what's happened. Yeah. And of course, at the, the end of that, she, she started as a well-trained teacher, strong online teacher, great um, uh, education methods background, having worked online for five or six years at, at night to bring herself up from a bachelor's to a master's to a certificate. Great, great arc story. Talk about a story to tell. 
Jewish yeah. Michael Leak is that story. Um, and now she's got it all. She can manage a project. She can put it together an interactive story. She can work in her eyes 360, can work and articulate. And as in any surprise, she just got hired full time for yeah. a remote position. <laughs> yeah. So she can work in her, her beautiful little farm in the middle of Wisconsin and uh, not have to leave it, not have to go to work at night in an emergency room. So that's going to change that story yeah. is, uh, is part of the stories that make it. And that's shared with a large group. I mean, we, we're yeah. connected that way. And so getting back to the origin, I was working with a character and her, her name was Michelle and she was um, one of the stick figures, cutouts from Articulate. Yeah. And she was, she was <laughs> chewing on this problem, the same problem that we deal with in, the, in our story. And um, I went back and I looked at that and then I realized where we'd gone with you. And that was that we wanted to reach a more diverse group and in particular, we wanted to reach people of color. And I realized I, I need to hire a black artist for this work. And I started, you know, we, we were pretty far along. We had our script together. We, we followed the steps. And by we, I say Trish had done most of the, <laughs> the heavy lifting and I hey, could look at it yeah. and give her background. <laughs> yeah. And she developed an incredible um, storyboard. I mean, she just knocked it out. And we'd done all these reference images by pulling things off the internet. And we'd really put a package together. And I'm looking for the right artist. And I wanted an artist that I could have a connection with that would be local. So here in San Diego, so we could work with our community and who had that talent and skill. And I couldn't find, I could find a lot of really talented young black women who were, who were doing great work, but I couldn't find anybody in San Diego. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I asked my neighbor who happened to be a retired photography teacher and artist herself and she had just seen an online exhibition at a gallery she'd helped set it up. And I found Charlene Mosley. And she's an international artist. She's based out of Berlin. Background working on the Vincent van Gogh movie that was nominated for an Academy Award. She did 400 paintings for that. Wow. Turns out she's living on Lemon Avenue within walking distance of my house. <laughs> now, serendipity man serendipity. serendipity so i we followed your formula we used all of the templates i wrote a i spent a long time on that letter i really wanted to connect with her presented her with the storyboard presented her with a crafted um, um scope of work used all of that and bam she ended up telling me she had never worked on a commission that was so well organized that she, she was in from the beginning because of the way uh, it looked on paper, the use of the storyboards. Then we started using Loom, which is something that Ryan had, uh, recommended. And all of that got her total buy-in. And so I asked her, in our, we had a closing conference just recently, and so I sent her a check. The artist always gets paid with me. That's all, that's, that's part of the deal. Uh, and uh, I asked her, well, what would you, would you use this again? Oh, she said, yeah, I hold it. absolutely. Show them the storyboard and we do it. Excellent. Because as a working commercial artist and a fine artist, she does commissions all the time and she's got great work lined up. But she just, the compliment of saying she had never seen anything so professionally organized was enormous and it wouldn't have happened without your guidance. I mean, we just... You know, we just used it and it allowed me to reach way beyond where I thought we could get. And the net result was, and even though she wasn't a sequential artist, <laughs> listen to that. She also, she had that work in um, um, storybooks she'd done with kids, but she'd never done that type of sequential work before she got into it. She started I, I thought going, well, maybe we can afford her to, on black and white. She's, oh, I'm going to do watercolors. And she's doing watercolors. And we've got these wonderful videos of her doing a whole figure in an hour, speed it up off of Instagram. And she just, just That's fun. really took off. But she got committed to the big vision, which is a, a world where healthcare is patient-centered and doctors and, and patients are peers and that eventually you become the doctor of yourself, that mm -hmm. you, you are able to gain the information and make the connections to understand what's happening to you and your body, even when you're at facing lethal situations. 
and not go into self-diagnostics or anything, but still have the skills and ability to communicate that way. So uh, it just was, it was magic. And uh, well, I'll hire her again in an instant if I have a, t a chance. She's a pretty busy woman, but man, she really <laughs> came through for us. So yeah, and yeah. Um, we're now planning a local fundraiser, and we're going to do some work with her originals and help raise some money. To my goal is to raise the money to keep the technical infrastructure up and running and <laughs> independent. So, yeah. um, but it all comes down to storytelling. And so I, I had to go to the board and sell this idea and it wasn't hard. I remember the pitch. Um, I, I did quite a bit with, you know, what it takes to, to do e-learning and what the tiers are and how much time it takes to get them softened up. And I radically underestimated the time it would take anyway. <laughs> but um, ultimately it was that the storytelling aspect would be so engaging and distinguish what we did so fundamentally that uh, that's how we had to go. And they signed on. Actually, they remember signing on the meeting. I had him as soon as I mentioned Joseph Campbell. Yeah. I bootlegged a couple of, of, uh, of slides from Ryan's presentation, right? Yeah. And as soon as that, that everybody resonated with Joseph Campbell, the incredible mythologist that could explain man's story and who was the ultimate influence on George Lucas and Star Wars and all exactly. the rest of it. And yeah. I even have Bill Moyers interviews with, at Skywalker Ranch, the month he died, Campbell oh, died wow. talking with George Lucas about the, the, the hero's quest. Now we have a, a hero who's female. It's time. <laughs> Here, females are heroes. And as a teacher, I worked for wonderful women for so long. It's, uh, it's really where I like to work. And that's another attraction because you're a wonderful woman and you run this incredible organization with uh, heart and soul. And uh, so it's, okay. it's easy to say this because it's all true. You know, I don't want to say anything that isn't. I'm, I'm too old to mess with it. <laughs> I wouldn't fact, expect you to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I, I remember you getting excited about the pitch and then coming back to us and going, they said yes, and it was Joseph Campbell who helped me. <laughs> so good, that's awesome. So um, after after you joined us, was there anything that surprised you about the program? Oh, well, I was surprised at how it really was in many ways um, um, an education in how to look at films, how to understand and parse um, narratives, the drama, and I, you know, I, I got an English degree. I, I, I know this stuff in my core, but I learned a lot real quickly about um, narration and about pacing and sequence. And I, I think that the emphasis on the beats, on the, that, that kind of real subtle timing, I may have gotten there original, uh, eventually, but not with not nearly as quickly and maybe never. And then I started seeing that when I'm watching other things, I, I, I love streaming TV. I mean, it's the golden age, right? So I'm watching these, these big dramas, these big arcs, and I'm thinking multi-levels and I'm hearing your voice in one ear and Ryan's voice in another ear and, <laughs> and seeing it. And it helps me uh, relate to my brother's work too, because he's, he's deeply involved in, in massive projects and admire and have better understanding of what he can handle too. So that surprised me, you know, I had an academic background. I'd worked on some screenplays. They didn't go far. I was born in Hollywood for God's sakes, <laughs> you know, and I had the connections and I had many years ago decided there's too much blood in the water here for me. <laughs> you know, I just, <laughs> I got to get out of this place. I spent most of my time in the mountains, but, uh, <laughs> uh, continue to write and do things, but just not screenplays. And, uh, so to come back to that and suddenly be learning new things. I love learning new things. That is really one of the things that drives me three years ago, four years ago, maybe I decided I want to learn about medicine. I wanted to learn about, um, integrative medicine in particular. And, because I was, I was getting bored with the, with e-learning. I really spent a decade or two plus and I knew it inside out. And all of a sudden 
here it is. And I've had this chance for the last four years to grow my skills and abilities and knowledge in the, the field and work with wonderful practitioners and scientists and doctors. And I'm, I'm learning something new every single day. And that's another big gift. Yeah. And to learn something about something I thought I knew well, oh man, that's, that just knocks the socks off me because, you know, as you get older, you think, well, I know that. And you knew it maybe how it was a while back, you know, <laughs> way yeah. back. And to have that, that kind of crystallized knowledge that people get onto, they hang on to, and they only see through that prism and have that break open. And all of a sudden you see things in a new way. And seeing things in a new way is the key to learning and communicating. And I don't know, feeling young, if not being young. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, what I love is that you've, um, a lot of people come into the program and I, we, when we started this conversation before we, we begin the interview is that they come in and they're like, oh man, look at all the things I'm going to have to do by myself. And you, you realize that in order to have greater impact, you're going to have to leverage and collaborate. So t tell me a little bit more about that. Well, um, I, I, as I, I mentioned to you in the past, uh, my background was the one man shop, the guy that made everything, you know, the grant work I had, I'd be the guy that would knock together the reusable learning objects. I'd be the guy that would build the web page. I would do these things for my own classes as I designed my own courses. I was always a one man shop. Worked fine when I was in a small group. Worked fine when I was with a terrific team and I've been blessed because man, I've been with some terrific teams, but I'd always been a maker and a worker. I'd never been a leader. Sometimes a little close, you know, sometimes I could push some things, but I wasn't interested in doing that. And in this new position that I took on with Precision Healthcare Ecosystem, um, they said, well, they said, basically, write your own descri job description and imagine that you had infinite amounts of funds to do it. Start thinking that way. That's what we're going to make happen, right? So mm -hmm. I started thinking more globally and how do I build a team? And how do I collaborate with that team in this online virtual world where I'm I'm a veteran here. I mean, I've, I've been doing this stuff since 1999 and before that, even back into the eighties. So it was a natural expansion, but suddenly as I, I got into this role, I realized that because of my living situation, because I'm, I'm a caretaker 24 seven of a loved one, I just didn't have the physical time or the mental speed anymore to do it all myself. I could imagine it. I could describe it. I could inspire people to help make it. And that's what I've learned in the last year working with Trish and you and all of the tools is, is how to lead this. Now, my big quest now is how do I find more people with a skill to tell these stories? They're around, they're hard to find. And if they're good at it, they're in high demand, right? <laughs> Which, because part of what I, I always got a kick out of with my students was helping them find work. The organization was small. They didn't have support students for the, or support systems for the kids or people, or not kids, they're adults, and oftentimes mid-career adults to find work. I would help them find work. I would, I would do that because it's part of the payoff of working in a distance and taking a teacher's money for credits you want to give them something back because yeah. they work so hard. I know how hard they worked. I worked that hard for 25 years. So this idea of building skills and abilities. And so I had the perfect test case with Trish. I mean, she just has it, right? She's got that inner drive. She's got the sk skills and talents. She's got a hungry mind. She can see things and she's got what it takes. I, I know to be a strong instructional designer and teacher and thinker and everything else. How do I find more people like that? Well, I know a whole bunch of them at this place that's organized out of Canada <laughs> called <laughs> Interactive Story Accelerator. So I've been thinking, okay, I got that in my back pocket. You know, when, the, when I really need to ramp up, I know where I can go yeah. and where I can find like minds and well-trained and people who know how to collaborate. I can trust because the big thing about hiring people is you put a lot of time and effort into finding them and hiring them. And if they're wrong, it's just, you just burned all that time. Yeah. And you don't have a product to show for it. 
And yeah, you would need somebody who's coachable because you can't expect everybody to know everything coming through the door. But that ability Trish has, and many of the best students I ever worked with was proactive thinking. They're not waiting to be told what to do. They're mm -hmm. thinking on their own about what they can do. And then they'll bring it in when they need it or they'll suggest it. And oftentimes it's just great and you go with it. And those people need to be in an environment where that is recognized. They're not locked in by some, you know, top-down tyrant who's, you do the PowerPoint conversions for the rest of your life. <laughs> you know, that's, you know, and you know, that's a, that sweatshop kind of uh, fool, foolishness is there. It is. And, uh, you know, and I, my personal animus towards PowerPoint has gotten me in trouble <laughs> because I work with so many academics and that's their second language. They love that stuff. Yes. I mean, they've grown up on it. And I understand now more, you know, when working with a, a subject matter expert, you're not going to diss their their PowerPoint. <laughs> I did once. I really put my foot in it. You know, I had to work hard to repair that damage. And honestly, the PowerPoints are terrific basic structures for instruction. I mean, it's really good, solid stuff. It just dies on the plate if you try to put it online and say, "Watch this." You know, that won't work. Yeah. But the the to get that from an expert is now gold. Where it used to be. Hmm, I don't want to work in PowerPoint. Now it's, well, I'll take it and maybe we can convert it. And I actually have a project like that going on right now with a, a, another brilliant guy who's, who's, whose work, his way of expressing himself is through PowerPoint. Yeah. What I like though is, is that he's just learned it. He's not solidified. Oh, good. There's, he's there's working on telling pictures. the story of um, the, how we did the interactive story of Michelle through PowerPoint which will then convert into lots of different ways to tell it and tag it to different places to go. So it's, it's been a real journey for me to give up making everything and the frustration that I was feeling that I couldn't make it to my standards. That was the other problem I had. It's, you know, it's not good enough. I do that a lot. It's just not good enough. And I remember when we showed you the, the piece you guys say pull the trigger man pull it pull the trigger it's ready you know back up let it go you know and, and i'm still just well <laughs> yes it, yes out of, the, out of the it has to go out into the world yeah right? yeah totally and we talked about this we said uh art is never finished it is just abandoned right and and that was a the lesson learned from all the courses i wrote was i i put out the first course and i'd get that feedback and i'd fix it and i I could go through five or six iterations trying to make the course better and better. And then it would be, I don't have to fix as much, but yeah. always I had this beautiful stream of feedback from my students. And you do this kind of work and you don't get that stream of feedback. You don't really know how it lands on people. It's, it's something that you're trying to intuit, but I'm working with folks that can create AI languages. And I'm telling them, I, I want something that will be able to interpret journal entries. And they're going, you know, we think we can do that. So this, this view that um, we can get feedback in different ways is, is real with the technology that's landing right now. And I've had this tech vision since the early 90s that I know AI scares a lot of people. Yeah, with good reason. But I can see its use for glorious reasons too. So that all ties into the excitement of building something that is open-ended it's connected with an api to the future of tech and um the thing that can't wear out the thing that will always be there is that story that's what connects people the information and if i can catch them with the story and i can deliver the information and hopefully help them save themselves empower themselves be able to take care of themselves protect themselves from misinformation and misinformation in the medical world is it's rampant it's wrong and it's all based around making the almighty buck right so the course teaches that aspect once they're past the story but it always reflects back on it we, we blended michelle into the coursework using the art mentioning her name talking about what you might do in these circumstances as we get people deeper into how to search how to find credible information where to look how to ask and uh, so it feels like my life's work and it is and uh, 
man, it's just wonderful. I say, get another bite of the apple at this time of my life. I didn't expect it, but it sure is good. <laughs> and to work with people like you and uh, who are, you really know what you're doing. I mean, it's just so clear. And uh, you're also, um, what I appreciate is your ability to connect this way. You know, the enthusiasm, the, the rigor uh, of structure that you bring to it. Those meetings, which I, I know I haven't attended many because oh. I'm hip deep in alligators and juggling <laughs> flaming cats. <laughs> but, uh, I know it's there. I know I can bring something there. And I already have an idea for the next story. I just don't want to invest too much time in it until I know I can get it funded. Yeah. And then, uh, well, we'll be back. Um, yeah. Hopefully I can hire Trish again. <laughs> we'll see. If she wants I don't to think she's, <laughs> she wants to leave you at all. I think she loved working yeah. on the project. So that's cool. Yeah. Um, so if you had advice for somebody joining, what would it be? I, well, it, 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 so much of it is um, based on your skills, your present skills and your aspirations, right? Where you want to go. Um, my primary audience has been talking to teachers because everybody I've taught since I began teaching online have been teachers. They've been teachers doing professional development, trying to learn better skills in the classroom, trying to offer a lot to integrate their technology into their work, and then eventually how to cope in an online learning environment. And many of those teachers are seeking ways out of a system that won't evolve. They're stifled, they're underpaid, they're unappreciated, and they love kids. And they love that part. And that's what keeps them hanging in there. Yeah. And then they reach a place similar to the place I reached where the thing that brought you in was burning up and there would be nothing left for the kids. So they had to find something new. But we see a lot of teachers going into instructional design. And I guess I, I, I know that audience, so I'll speak to that audience. And that is, they have to get away from the village they're in before their skills will be appreciated. You know, they, somebody once told me, you know, Dennis, a wise man is never recognized in this home village. <laughs> the only way they'll know you have any worth is to get out. And then they might see you in a different way. And so if you're a teacher or if you're a person who feels comfortable in the web, who, who enjoys creating sequences of instruction, who, who feels they understand how people learn, it's a, it's a interesting career if you're wide open to learning, if you're able to get fluent with different technologies, if you're not afraid of the online medium. And sometimes I get teachers in my e-learning classes and they were so frightened of being online that I spent all my time teaching them how to be online, which is okay. It was a double yeah. loop. You know, you come out of the class, you know how to learn online and you know the content, but there were some that just, mm, it wasn't right. But if this is right for you, this is, this is gold because the basics are not, they're sophisticated and complex, but they're not enough to really distinguish you with a particular skill that's really hard to find. I mean, interactive storytelling is a particular skill that's really hard to find. And the, the best designers can do it and they do it brilliantly. And there's lots of different schools of thought and that's great. But if, if you're looking for something that's going to make that resume turn into a, a job. And I always taught people I thought of as like they're Ronin Samurai. They're, you're gonna go from place to place. You're not gonna work for one person. It's not a monolithic situation. You're an entrepreneur and a freelancer and you're, you're into that freedom. Then having that skill and ability will change your life. It will open doors that you didn't even know were there until you were aware enough to say, well, there's the door, I'm going through it. So I guess that'd be my advice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's solid. That's solid advice. So if people want to learn more about your startup or they want to connect more or they want, or they want to send you money because they want, you to, they want to fund your next interactive story, where should they go? What should they? Okay, uh, they should go to, and it's, boy, this thing is a mouthful and it's, it's really hard to type as a-, as a uh, I'll, I'll put the link underneath the video when we post it so that it's easier to- It's, like. called, it's called Precision Healthcare Ecosystem dot org and uh, it's a 
small nonprofit based in San Diego, um, funded somewhat by wonderful people with great connections. And it's primarily composed of scientists, computer scientists, doctors, MDs with an incredible range of genetic understanding, specialty areas in big data, who are seeking a way to quantify human health, to be able to track and understand all aspects of everything from your microbiome to your brain, to your heart and where it all connects and where science and energy medicine from the East connect in that union and that place where the East has known it all, the time, all along and now um, science can suddenly measure it. So it must be true. <laughs> so it's a wonderful nexus of, of, of brilliant people. And I'm there every minute. I'm the guy that's used to talking to normal people <laughs> and, <laughs> You're the liaison. and trying to communicate with folks <laughs> that don't think way up in the stars. But these are, these are soulful people, all of whom who have experienced really difficult health situations and come to the conclusion that um, the medical system we have now can't understand them, won't pay attention to them. And in particular, most are women who have been shut down by patriarchal medical system thinking that says, oh, well, that's just in your head. <laughs> you know? So um, we're going to, this, this story will eventually be linked to a class and we're going to open it for free, but with um, optional donations. Cool. And so if you want to come and look free, that's great. And I think you have the link where there's a, a demo of the uh, it's actually, it's our finished course for Michelle that people can look at. And if they get all the way to the end and they're asked, they want to learn more, I put them on an interest list because the course isn't ready to go online yet. It's close, but then I'm building a WordPress site with LearnDash over here. Oh, I see. Oh, good. <laughs> is, this is like wrestling with the, an octopus that's suddenly grown extra arms. <laughs> so. <laughs> No, that's no, that's awesome. So uh, basically, if people are interested, um, they can check out the. They'll go through the interactive story, get get engaged, find their why for why it's important, regardless of whether they've ever been a woman or pregnant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so they'll find their why for actually digging into your course, and then they can sign up. Yes, and eventually it. it'll be there, and it will be free or for donations. Um, oh, that's fabulous! That's how people feel. Yeah. And uh, always open to feedback. So, of course, we know this. <laughs> Fabulous. Um, Dennis, uh, thank you. This was so, um, it was a good deep talk. I really yeah. appreciate you, the yeah. feedback that you gave. And, and I, uh, I can't wait to actually, I, I want this. Like, I, I, I heard every time you jump on, on a call, you have this vision uh, for how you wanted to integrate this. And then I know that also, one of the things that you're doing is really trying to help people with this. It's not, yeah, it's, sort of it's really like a quest that you're going on yourself. Yeah. It's your own hero's journey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> trying to help everybody along the path, right? Yeah, no, it's fabulous. So, uh, so uh, what I'll do is I'll put the link to, uh, to the interactive story and your startup underneath the video and uh, uh, we'll get people going through it and, and, and signing up. Much obliged. All right. And, uh, be seeing you again real soon, I'm sure. I hope so. All right. Take care, <laughs> sir.